Buying cryptocurrency can be exciting and make you feel like you're part of a whole brand new world. But then reality sets in and you realize, Wait, now that I've bought this cryptocurrency and I'm on my way to becoming a Shiba Inu billionaire, how do I store it so it doesn't get stolen through a scam or a hack? And honestly, this is one of the biggest problems with the entire crypto space. Far too many people buy cryptocurrencies and NFTs without knowing how to properly store them. And that's where the Trezor hardware wallet comes in. Because if you set up this hardware wallet and properly store your seed phrase, it's almost impossible for somebody to steal your crypto or your NFTs. So today I'll be setting up this Trezor Model 1 and showing you step by step the entire process, including setting up the seed phrase and the passcode. So that way you know what to expect when you set up your own. I'm Devin Cook. Let's set up a Trezor wallet and welcome back to Dev Money. Now, first off, let's talk a bit more about why a hardware wallet is even necessary in the first place. And that first comes from one of the main reasons people use cryptocurrencies in the first place. It's decentralized. And that means that large institutional banks are not involved and you're really cutting out the middleman in your finances. And while there are a lot of benefits, there are also a couple of drawbacks. If you've ever been victim of credit card fraud or you've lost your passphrase to get into your bank account, you know how easy it is to just call up your bank, have them reverse that transaction on your credit card, or even just hitting that forgot password button, and then you get a new password and you get access to your account really simply. This can all be done within a couple of minutes. And that's really the extent of your problems if you ever get credit card fraud or you lose your password to a bank. It's extremely extremely easy to fix and remedy. And we do not have that same benefit with cryptocurrency, not even close. When you set up your cryptocurrency wallet, you're gonna have three different keys, although two of them are pretty interchangeable. You're gonna have your public key, you're gonna have your seed phrase, and you're gonna have your private key, which is derived from your seed phrase. And your public key is a long string of characters starting with a zero and an X, and it's totally safe to share this public key with anyone that you know. Sharing your public key is really no different than sharing your name with somebody. If somebody has your public key, then they can send you NFTs, they can send you cryptocurrencies or they can see what's in your wallet, but they can never take anything out of your wallet. And your public key is also known as your wallet address. And this is what you'll typically see online if people are posting about it in Twitter because of a crypto or an NFT giveaway. You'll also be given a seed phrase, also known as a recovery phrase. And this is a 12 to 24 mnemonic phrase that will essentially unlock all of your crypto and your NFTs. And you're gonna use this seed phrase to set up your wallet or recover your wallet and put it on another device, another computer or something something like that. And it is extremely important. I cannot stress enough how important it is to keep this seed phrase safe from anybody. Do not ever post it online. Do not ever give it to anybody because if somebody has this seed phrase, your crypto assets are as good as gone because they can now log into your account and take whatever they want. And if you do feel like your seed phrase has been compromised in the past, maybe you did share it somewhere you shouldn't have, or really you shared it at all for that fact, you really need to set up a new wallet and move all of your crypto assets to that new wallet. And unlike traditional banks where if someone steals your money or you're victim of a credit card fraud, the banks in most cases will take that loss and give you back your funds because they're insured. But with cryptocurrencies, if you ever are a victim of fraud or a scam and your assets are stolen, whether it's cryptocurrencies or NFTs, you can essentially account that as a permanent loss because there's no way to get your assets back. Now you also have a private key and this is essentially like your pin code to your ATM when you go to a bank, but this is way more secure than that four digit pin code. And people will often use the terms private key and seed phrase interchangeably and while they pretty much are in a lot of ways the same thing, there is a slight difference that I want you to be aware of. Your private key is a 256 bit number, which means it's made up of 256 binary bits and is approximately 77 digits long. And it would be a lot to memorize such a long number. And so instead we use this mnemonic seed phrase and from your seed phrase, your 256 bit private key is then derived and you're able to move crypto assets out of your wallet. So that's why people use these terms interchangeably. For all intents and purposes, think of your seed phrase as your private key, but just understand what's going on under the hood. To state it again, your seed phrase is used to derive your 256 bit private key, which is then used to unlock your account, confirm transactions and send anything out of your crypto wallet. And I know that was a bit technical there. So let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. So as long as you keep everyone from having access to your seed phrase, you're good to go and your wallet shouldn't be compromised. And a wallet like Trezor or like Ledger that's hardware based is going to store those private keys, that seed phrase 
on the device itself and never expose it online. So that means that your private key is never gonna leave the device, but all of the transactions have to be confirmed physically on that hardware device. And this obviously is gonna create a bit more hassle when it comes to paying for things or sending crypto out of your wallet, but that's the price you pay for added security. Now, what is the best way to store your seed phrase and keep it safe? Well, you wanna store it somewhere physical. You never wanna store it online. Don't ever take a photo of it as a backup. Don't put it in your Google Drive. Don't put it in your Dropbox. Doing things like that can potentially compromise your entire account because if ever Google Drive or Dropbox were hacked and someone got your seed phrase, they can get access to your crypto a wallet and take everything that's in there. So the most secure way to store your seed phrase is to store it somewhere physical, like on CryptoSteel. And CryptoSteel is basically just a metal way of storing your seed phrase. So that way, in case of a flood or a fire that would destroy paper, your seed phrase is not gonna be completely destroyed. And then if you wanna go that extra mile, which I recommend, you would then store your seed phrase, which is on that CryptoSteel, within a very secure safe or a safety deposit box within a bank. And I really like the idea of going with that safety deposit box in the bank because you can also ensure sure that pretty easily. Also memorizing your seed phrase is strongly recommended, but I would also want a crypto steal backup just in case my memory fails me for a second. And if you ever wonder at what point you should be getting a hardware wallet instead of just using a typical wallet like Trust Wallet or MetaMask, now that's gonna be a different answer for everybody, but the rule of thumb that I go off of is if you have more than $1,000 in total crypto assets, I would get a hardware device. And that's just because to me, losing $1,000 is a fair amount of money. If you have $100 or $200 in crypto, honestly, I wouldn't worry about it too much because $100 dollar loss isn't really that big of a deal and you're gonna be spending almost that much just getting your hardware wallet anyway but ultimately you're gonna to have to make your own decision in terms of what threshold you need to hit before going out and buying a hardware wallet and if any of you are concerned because you're thinking well what happens if I use this hardware wallet and then it's destroyed in a fire it's destroyed in a flood or it's lost or stolen well that's honestly not a big deal at all because your cryptocurrencies and NFTs are not actually stored in this wallet they're still stored online and on the blockchain so if this is ever destroyed you still have your cryptocurrencies. The only thing actually stored on this device is your private key. And so if you ever lose this, you can then just go buy another one and then use that seed phrase, that private key to set up a new device. And then you have access to all of your crypto assets all over again, and you can do with them whatever you want. So worst case scenario, if you're using a hardware wallet to store a Bitcoin and then you lose that hardware wallet or it gets destroyed, well, then you go spend another $60, buy another one of these, re-input your seed phrase to set up this wallet, and then you have access to that Bitcoin again, no issues. Now, when choosing which Trezor to buy, you have two options. You have the Trezor Model 1, which is the one I have, and you have the Trezor Model T. And keep in mind, there's links for the Trezor down below in the description, as well as for Crypto Steel. And this is the Trezor Model 1. You can get it either in white or in black, and it's just priced at $63, so that makes it pretty affordable. And then you have the Trezor Model T, and this one is gonna be quite a bit more expensive at $221. And there's a couple of differences between the two models, one of them being the larger screen size and nicer display on the Trezor Model T. On the Trezor Model T, you can also see that you can get a few more coins that are supported, most notably being Cardano, which is extremely helpful if you have Cardano. You're gonna get this full color touchscreen instead of the monochrome display and the two buttons. On the Trezor Model T, you're also gonna have a Shamir backup, which is a way to recover your seed phrase in case you ever lost it. And Trezor Model T also supports a micro SD card, which is gonna be helpful if you have a lot of different cryptocurrencies that you wanna store on these devices. Because each cryptocurrency that you want to store, you have to download an app onto that device, so that way you can store that crypto. And just like your phone or your computer where you're limited in terms of how many things you can have on those devices by the storage capacity of those devices, the Trezor works the same way. The more space you have on it, the more apps you can have and the more crypto you can have on there as well. And in case there's any confusion, as long as you have the Bitcoin app, you can store however many Bitcoins you want on that app. But if you have 3000 different cryptocurrencies, you're probably not gonna be able to store 3000 apps on this device. So if you do have 3000 cryptocurrencies, you're gonna wanna go with the Trezor Model T because you can get a micro SD card and store more apps and thus more crypto. But I went with the Trezor Model 1 because it does everything I needed to and I didn't see the need to spend the extra money on the Model T. So let's unbox this Trezor and set it up. And when you do get the device, you do wanna make sure that it is all sealed correctly. You see you have these little seals and you wanna make sure that no one has opened it and no one has tampered with it. And so once you've checked those, you can cut it open and you're gonna realize that there is a lot of glue holding this thing together. So just be careful when you open it up. So when you pull it out, you're gonna get your little Trezor device and this little foam. You're gonna get a little lanyard and you're also gonna get a USB cable. And then you're also gonna have some documentation, some stickers, and some things that you can use as well. And you'll be getting two copies of a little fold-out paper that you can use to write down your recovery phrase. Now you'll need to go onto Trezor.io and download the Trezor app onto your computer. And once you've downloaded Trezor onto your computer, you're gonna get this message that just says to connect your Trezor. So in order to do that, we're gonna take our little device, peel off that little protective film, 
down and from there you're going to connect the cable to your computer and then plug that cable into your Trezor device and you're going to see it power on. It's going to say welcome please wait and on your computer you're going to get this window come up that says that they would like to collect your data. I'm going to hit confirm on that. It is anonymous and then also you're going to get the security check so you want to check that your hologram was intact and then you're going to want to make sure you bought it from an official store from Amazon, the official Trezor Amazon or from Trezor.io and you want to make sure the package wasn't tampered with which it wasn't in my case so go ahead and set up Trezor. You're going to need to install the latest version of firmware which should just take a minute and while that's occurring you can look on your Trezor device and see that it's installing there as well. Now you're going to get this window pop up that says to disconnect your Trezor device so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it and then I'm going to reconnect it without holding down any buttons so make sure to do that just hold it here on the sides and then once you reconnect it it's going to say please wait one second to continue it's processing you can hit continue right here and you're going to hit create a new wallet. On your device it's going to say go to trezor.io slash start which is just going to prompt you to download Trezor onto your computer. Then it's going to tell us if we want a wallet backup we want the standard seed backup we're going to confirm that we do want to set up a new wallet on our Trezor by just hitting this right button right here. Now we're going to create this backup which is going to generate the 24 word seed phrase. We're going to confirm all of these boxes just showing that we know how to keep a seed phrase safe and hit begin backup. And now it's going to give us this list of words that we're going to need to write down so that way we can re-enter it into our Trezor device. And you're going to see all of those words on my Trezor right here. This is your seed phrase. You need to keep this extremely secure. The only reason I'm sharing it here is because I'm going to be setting up this Trezor device with a new seed phrase anyway. So this one is not important and don't go ever set up a wallet with this seed phrase that I'm showing you right here. It's compromised at this point. Don't ever use it. So your Trezor is going to repeat those words twice. You do need to double check those and then you're going to need to set up a pin. So you are going to need to confirm this on the Trezor by just hitting that right button. Now what you're going to do is you're going to see these numbers appear on your Trezor device and these numbers are going to coordinate with the keypad or the pin pad that you see on your computer. This right here. So that means that the three is this number at the top. So if I want to go a one, two, three, four as my password and it hit middle two, three, four, and let's go five, six, seven, eight, nine enter pin. Now we have to repeat it, but the number's shuffled on the Trezor. So we have to redo this and we're just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hit enter pin. It's verifying. And now your pin has been set as in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're going to want to use a more strong pin than that, but this is just for an example. And now you're going to see this window and it's going to ask you to activate coins. Basically, it's going to be installing apps for every crypto that you have. So if we have Bitcoin, we'll hit Bitcoin. We'll hit Ethereum. If we have Ethereum and say we have Dogecoin, so we'll hit Dogecoin and that's going to install those apps on the Trezor device. And we can skip these two sections down here and just hit complete setup. And now the setup is complete. You can name your wallet. I'm just going to name mine Dev Money Test and then you can access the suite. Now to access our wallet, we're just going to need to enter that pin code that we just made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in this case. And then we're going to need to confirm that on the Trezor to access the account on our computer. So just hit that right button to confirm it. If you don't have anything in this wallet, it's going to ask you to confirm your pin again, just to make sure that you do want a wallet that is empty. So just confirm your passphrase again and hit confirm passphrase. Confirm that on your Trezor and then you're good to go. And now you're in your account on Trezor and you can see that your backup has been created, your pin has been enabled and your passphrase has been enabled and I just use the same one for each because this is just a test and you can see your Bitcoin account your Ethereum account and your Dogecoin account and once you transfer money into these accounts you're going to see those balances show up here and if you click on one of these accounts like your Bitcoin account and you hit this receive button you can see your wallet address by showing full address and then you can copy this wallet address and use this to send money to this Bitcoin wallet in your Trezor device. So that's how to set up your Trezor wallet. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.